In this video, we want to talk about the coordinate transformations that are necessary so that we can go from one reference frame to another. We're looking at this as, through rotation of axes, like you do when you're going from the Earth-centered inertial to the Earth-centered Earth-fixed. But then we need to be able to talk also about how do you go from lat-long height or lat-long altitude to the Earth-centered Earth-fixed. So just to remind you, our reference frames here, uh, we have the inertial reference frame, which in this image, uh, is uh, uh, the axes have subscript cap I. Uh, you have the Earth-centered Earth-fixed reference frame rotating at the uh, rate omega sub E uh, relative to the uh, inertial frame with uh, axes uh, with a sub cap E, so X sub cap E, etc. And then somewhere out here, there's a, a body, a local reference frame uh, with a northeast down orientation. So uh, the x-axis is pointed towards north, the y-axis is pointed to the east, and z is pointed by a right-hand rule considerations down towards what would be the center of the Earth if it was a spherical geometry. The only way the Earth-centered Earth fix differs from the Earth-centered inertial is by that rotation. It rotates uh, uh, in time. So to get to uh, in a uh, time t from the origin or from some, you know, over a course of time uh, t, uh, it rotates through an angle psi, which we're going to take as omega times t. So the view here on the right is looking down. Uh, the axes labeled X and Y could stand for the inertial frame. The axes labeled X prime and Y prime could stand for the rotating frame. Uh, here we've just shown that a fixed rotation psi, uh, and we have a point. And it's the points, the points there in the world. Uh, we're just looking at it. How do we? Uh, what are the coordinates of the point in uh, uh, one reference frame uh, given the coordinates of the points in the other reference frame? So um, this is all figured out by trig. Uh, to get the x prime coordinate, we have to take the projection of x onto the x prime axis. And uh, so that would be by a cosine. Uh, if you can see that innermost uh, triangle between x and the intersect of x and the x prime axis and then back to the origin, that triangle there uh, uh, has an angle cosine of phi. And so the projection onto the x prime axis of x would be x cosine phi. Similarly, the projection of the y point onto the x prime axis will be y sine phi because the angle that the y point is making with the x prime axis is now going to be uh, 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 have the sine of the angle in there, uh, and so we can and then those have to add up to be the x prime coordinate. Um, similarly, the y prime coordinate is minus x times sine phi plus y times the cosine of phi. Uh, um, so we can get the new coordinates from the uh, old coordinates just by using trig. We can write this in a matrix format where our point P with the uh, components X and Y is a column vector. Uh, our point P prime with components X prime and Y prime is also a column vector. And then we have a matrix, a transformation matrix, or what's called a rotation matrix, which will take us from uh, uh, the X, Y axes to the X prime, Y prime axes. Uh, and, and this matrix has some nice properties to it. Uh, if you don't know how to, uh, to, I mean, the matrix multiplication is pretty simple. You take the, the uh, vector of interest x, y, and flip it on its slide and slide it down through the components of the matrix. So x prime is cos phi times x plus sine phi times y. y prime is minus sine phi times x time, uh, plus cos phi times y. Uh, this matrix is nice. I mean, this assuming the uh, unit vectors are the same in the x and y direction, which we have implicitly done here, uh, the vector from the origin to the point there, uh, p, to the yellow dot, that's the same length in both reference systems. So the matrix here doesn't screw up the length of the vector. Uh, and it's called an ortho orthonormal. Ortho meaning its components are going to be orthogonal to each other. And uh, uh, normal meaning it, it doesn't screw up the magnitude. It has a, a, a determinant of one, if you will. Uh, it also has a nice property that the inverse, uh, if we wanted to get uh, uh, from x prime, y prime, if we wanted to get back to x, y, we could multiply x prime, y prime, uh, or we could multiply uh, uh, x prime, y prime times the, uh, um, the inverse of the matrix C, uh, the cosine minus sine cos matrix there. And that turns out to be the transpose. Uh, the inverse of an orthonormal matrix turns out to be the transpose of that matrix. And so we can uh, find x and y 
by uh, the same kind of operation. The only difference is that we've swapped the sign, uh, the, the SIGN of the sign terms uh, along the uh, uh, anti-diagonal there. So if the Earth was spherical, uh, going from lat long and, and height to uh, ECEF would be uh, only trig. Uh, it's the same idea. Uh, you uh, have X and Y. Uh, you would take the uh, cosine of, uh, uh, of lambda, uh, uh, the, the cosine of phi to project things down into the XY plane, uh, and then you take the cosine of lambda uh, to get the projection onto X and the sine of lambda to get the, uh, the projection onto Y. Uh, the problem here is that uh, uh, it's not spherical. The angle phi is not the angle with, uh, it doesn't intersect the origin there. The, the line from the normal at the surface down towards the center of the earth ends up intersecting the x, the horizontal, uh, uh, the xy plane there. And that angle is going to be our uh, latitude now. So the longitude is the same, but the latitude uh, is going to be this, uh, uh, it's called the geodesic latitude. Uh, and it's not the same as the latitude you would get from projecting down to the center of the Earth, but then that wouldn't be a normal at the surface there. So if we knew the length of that line, uh, and it, it, it has, you have, it's not shown on this image, you'll see it on the next slide, but the line projected all the way down to the z-axis. It will intersect the z-axis. If we had the length of that line, then we could do our standard, take the cosine of, of the, to get the projection down into the xy plane and then take the cosine of lambda to get the x component, do the same thing to get the uh, y component, but how do you get the z component back? So that's, that's a, 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 a tricky part there. But it still can be done mainly with trig and with uh, analytic geometry. So here's a cross section through that ellipse. Uh, you can see our uh, uh, point out there above the surface at a height h above the surface. Uh, the tangent, the, the normal there makes the right angle with the surface, uh, and that line projects all the way down to the z-axis uh, and makes that angle phi with the, uh, uh, the, x, uh, the horizontal plane there. The length of that n, which runs from the z-axis to the surface, so, and that's going to depend on the angle phi. At, at, at the origin, uh, excuse me, when phi is equal to 0, that's going to be a. And when phi is equal to 90 degrees, it needs to be b. Uh, so we need something that goes between A and B as phi increases, and it turns out that that number uh, is A scaled by uh, 1 over the square root of 1 minus epsilon square sine square of, of phi. That epsilon uh, is the same as from the previous set of slides. That's the eccentricity squared, and that's uh, the square root of uh, uh, alpha A squared minus B squared uh, all over A. So it's a measure of the square difference of, of the two uh, uh, axes there, uh, normalized by the length of the, uh, uh, the A axis. So we get our uh, X and Y back, as we said previously, and now the Z coordinate is that N times a scale factor, one minus epsilon square, and then we need the height H uh, times sine of, of phi there. So that's how we can get the z coordinate. So we can actually just directly calculate uh, from lat long height, uh, we can get back uh, the uh, xyz coordinates in the Earth centered Earth fixed system. We'd like to go from the Earth centered Earth fixed to the lat long height. Uh, there is no closed form way to do this. Uh, uh, there's, so that means there's two approaches one is to have an approximate direct form, or to do it by iteration. And uh, the solution is going to iterate uh, uh, rapidly. It converges with one or two iterations to, uh, to, to good enough for our purposes and almost anybody's purposes. So uh, we can get the longitude back uh, from our previous expressions for X and Y since uh, they both involved uh, the, uh, uh, the same uh, N times the cos of phi. Uh, uh, both of them involved N cos phi, one times sine of uh, the, the y component times sine of lambda, uh, the x component times cos of lambda, so we can take the ratio of y to x and get back the tangent of lambda so we can get lambda back from there. But to get phi and h, we have to iterate. Uh, uh, and and uh, so the most common approach is based on the Newton-Raphson method of, of solving equations. 
So you have to formulate this so you're solving something. You're trying to get the roots equal to zero, and you also have the, uh, the derivative of it as it changes with the parameters you're interested in. We have two parameters here. So we initialize this thing, um, saying we're gonna our first guess as to the height will be zero. Our first guess as to the length n will be a, and our uh, guess for the uh, uh, the radius, the direction, uh, the, the length, uh, uh, how big that line is in the horizontal plane, uh, that's going to be square root of x squared minus y squared. And then we'll iterate this until we uh, 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 the change is small enough. And again, I mean, so you say, you know, until the absolute value of this value of h minus that previous value of h is less than, you know, change less than 1% or something. So inside the uh, algorithm, we approximate sine of phi uh, with the expression z over n quantity 1 minus epsilon squared plus h. And then we approximate the tangent of phi with z plus epsilon squared times n uh, times the sine of phi, the one we just uh, uh, estimated there, divided by p. And then we update uh, using that phi that we get back from the tangent of phi, we use that to uh, estimate uh, n. And so uh, at that phi, and you use the same formula we did before for n, uh, uh, a over the square root of one minus epsilon square sine phi. And then we update h with p over cos phi uh, minus our n from the uh, step above. And then again, we compare our new h with our old h, or our new uh, n with our new n, or our new n plus h with our old n plus uh, h. And, and when the change is small enough, we say we're done. Otherwise, we keep going. So this way we can approximate uh, um, n uh, and phi. Mainly we're trying to get phi at h here uh, from the uh, 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 given uh, terms we have. So in summary, uh, going from Earth-centered inertial to Earth-centered earth fix and back is just a matter of using trig uh, with that rotation matrix C we had there with the cosines in it, sines and cosines. But to go from lat long height to ECEF, uh, there's a typo. Uh, there's a direct method of going from lat long height to earth centered earth fixed, but we had to use iteration to go from earth centered earth fixed to lat long height. So in the next video, we'll talk about going from the NED uh, frame to the body and body back to the NED. And that's mainly just going to involve rotations of uh, our coordinate system because those are just going to, and we're going to get from one to the other through a sequence of rotations. Uh, and, and this involves what are called the Euler angles. And uh, Euler figured this stuff about rotation of solid bodies back in the, you know, the 1790s and stuff. So uh, we still continue to live in the uh, shadow of Euler uh, and all the great math he did.